Welcome to the Angels Win Podcast with former Angels broadcaster Victor Rojas, featuring Jeff Stoddart and Chuck Richter. And now it's time to talk about some baseball. Victor, take it away. I'll take it away, but it's going to be Jeff Stoddart. It's going to be running the point today. I want him to be the point guard for today's episode on the Angels Win Podcast. Of course, uh, I'm Victor Rojas. Thank you for so much for joining us. Chuck Richter's alongside as well. And uh, a little season preview, if you will. And uh, what episode is this now? 20 what? No, 32. 32. <laughs> yeah. 32. That shows how much I've been paying attention. Boy. <laughs> I got to stop drinking. <laughs> I got too much time on my hands. We'll start drinking more. Yeah, thirty-two. Which? That's right. That's right. I think the last one I did was t- number twenty-nine. Cheers. Yeah. Um, Cheers, gentlemen. And then, uh, yeah, you guys had a couple, uh, including Wayne, last week or mm-hmm. whatever it was ten days ago. And yeah, and here mm-hmm. we are. Season starts in a uh, little less than uh, forty-eight hours. The Angels will open mm-hmm. out on the road, three in Baltimore and three in Miami, against the Fish before returning home. And uh, after an off day, I think it's what the fifth on Friday against the uh, Boston Red Sox. Is that uh, does that yep. sound right? That sounds right. So I've been paying a little bit of attention. (laughs) Right. Well, there's been a lot to pay attention to. Uh, Lots, lots to, uh, to cover today. Um, Obviously I'm sure a lot of people are going to want us to, uh, to weigh in on what's going on with, with Shohei and Ipe. And we'll certainly do that. Um, But I think we're going to kind of start off with, uh, you know, a bit of a preview of the 2024 season, our thoughts going into it. Um, observations from spring training, um, Mm -hmm. you know, what's going on around the league. Uh, Again, cheers to all of you listening. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Like, subscribe, hit that, uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, We appreciate you, you listening in and and being part of the conversation. So Chuck, Mm -hmm. I think I'll I'll start off kicking it over to you. I know that you uh, were able to go down to, uh, to Tempe and spend some time down there, see the, see some games what are your thoughts as we as we head into the the 2024 campaign um you know what should fans expect players to be looking out for uh yeah get, get um, us going i you know what i really i mean we did a poll earlier on the website and on x like what are what are you what is your projection of wins for the angel season and man there were some really low numbers there um, overall, I think, um, the majority of the fan base has really low expectations and I kind of like being in that spot, to be honest. Um, how many of these years in the past, over the past decade, were we either ranked number one or two going into the season, um, or with the chance, uh, you know, for a playoff spot and now nobody's, none of the pundits are putting us down. You know, they're saying they're penciling us in at fourth place, um, you know, and and really with Ron Washington at the helm and the way they're running wild on the bases and playing really good defense behind him. Um, pitchers are throwing strikes, uh, you know, with uh, Barry and Wright's tutelage. And um, and man, I just to me, having a good balance of homegrown talent on this roster and this lineup and rotation and um, some other veterans that they've added and veterans that have been on the team like Trout and and Rendon. Um, I'm excited because I want to see how we talk about how when we hear Ron Washington speak right to the media in an interviews, like, man, I want to run through the wall, you know, for that guy, how much more. So, with the players who get to be under his teaching and, and, in uh, uh, you know, and coaching every day. Um, what are they, I mean, so I want to see if they're going to run through a wall, right. <laughs> for, from Ron Washington and man, you know, seeing Nolan Shanuel, uh bulk up and, you know, he was a question mark is yeah. You know, he gets on base. He can, he can make contact, but he's going to hit for enough power. Um, he looks like he's, you know, he's he's added some bulk, like I mentioned, and and he's hitting the ball far and with higher exit velocities. Um, 
Yeah, I think you know? he and I both put on about 15 to 20 pounds in the off season. <laughs> so that, uh... I love it. I love that dialogue between you and Eric or Weston on that. <laughs> uh, but really, I can go on and, and we'll come back. You know, I, I want to give some of you guys a, a chance to, to talk, but I'm I'm excited, you know, because yeah. zero expectations other than really looking forward to seeing how this young team sprinkled in with some veterans and a superstar like Mike Trout uh, do under Ron Washington. Yeah. Jeff Fletcher from the Orange County Register had a good piece. It was either mm-hmm. yesterday or the day before where he interviewed some of the guys and Victor, it came across as them having, you know, a bit of a chip on their shoulder. Um, you know, I think specifically of, of Patrick Sandoval and, you know, talking about how, you know, they're not listening to any of the, the noise from outside, that they're just trusting the guys in the locker room and they believe in themselves, which, I mean, I, on one hand, you love to hear it. On the other hand, I don't know what we would expect them to say. You know, it's not like he's going to say, yeah, this is probably going to be a wasted season and we're just going through the motions. I mean, no one's going to say that, but you'd like to think that it, it's true, especially as Chuck kind of mentioned, when you're, when you have a new guy like, like Wash in there, that's, you know, someone that just naturally seems to have that, that it to pump people up. I guess the question is, what, what's the noise that you are blocking out? Mm-hmm. I mean, the, what, that nobody's talking about you? Right. I, I don't know. I, I mean, <laughs> you're if, blocking out the, the silence. The silence, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's no noise. And, 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 uh, you know, I'm not, not overly surprised as to where, um, you know, the Angels are being picked, all things considered. When you, I mean, you look at um, what Pakoda and fan graphs as far as the number of wins for the world champion Texas Rangers isn't that great. Um, they still have the Astros winning the division. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, and, and I've always said, just take those things with a grain of salt because you don't play a game on a computer. You actually have to go out and, and play 162 and then take your chances, right? But, you know, look, I, I think I think going into 24, we all had kind of the same summaries of 23, that we we kind of liked what we saw, especially from the the young guys. Uh, you want to make sure that Logan O'Hoppy can stay healthy and and do it for a full season. You want to see that Zach Neto can stay healthy and do it for a full season. I think the experience that they got last year is invaluable. Um, they know what the expectations are. Uh, Nolan Chanuel, you know, as we talked uh, last year, the draft, I think it was a surprise. Uh, it surprised a lot of people, even though he was a very good bat to ball guy in college, um, and not at a Power Five conference. That uh, he he proved that he can obviously get to the big leagues, understands what is happening to him, and in in the midst of a game, how he's being pitched. And you know, if you've got that elite skill of bat to ball, hand eye coordination, you, you're you're going to have a pretty good shot. The fact that he went out and put a little extra weight, got something behind the, the baseball a little bit. As long as they're not modifying the swing, uh, you know, trying to get loft, uh, let the loft happen naturally. I think that would mm-hmm. be, I think that's the best. Um, you know, other, other than that, you know, I, I think it's good that, look, you, you have zero expectations. You got nothing to lose. So from that right. standpoint, I can understand where Patrick is coming from. It's like, hey, man, it doesn't matter what anybody else is saying whether poo-pooing us or building us up, whatever the case may be, we have zero pressure on us. And it's true. They have zero pressure on them. None whatsoever. Yep. There's no high price free agent that just came in or two that all of a sudden is supposed to propel them. And if they don't get to whatever amount of wins that they're just going to get crushed. Uh, no, it's, it's pretty much the same core. Uh, I think Perry, as we've talked about before, uh, kind of went the route that we thought you should go if you're not going to invest on the front end of the rotation uh you know build up the back of the bullpen and so that you can shorten games up uh but i you know look i i i have no idea what the win i've never been good at guessing you know the over under on wins for a season i've frick i don't know i I really don't because it's just I'm, i'm awful at it uh, because you just never know how things play out. I mean, sure. mm-hmm. Verlander could come back 
and not be Verlander of old. Urquidy could be out for an extended period of time. Now, granted, they've got some guys in the minor leagues, and their offense is pretty good, but anything can happen to the Astros, right? The Rangers, what's going to happen with them? Their rotation's a little bit different than it was last year. Montgomery's not there. I think they've got a pretty solid you know, nucleus of players. Their offense is pretty good. Seager, I guess, is going to be back much earlier. White mm-hmm. Langford, I think, is going to be an absolute stud. Uh, I know everyone talks about uh, Holiday with the Orioles, but White Langford is a man-child. And yeah. that dude is breaking camp with the big league squad, and I think he's got a chance to be a rookie of the year. That's how, that's how good I think he is. Um, the Mariners, you know, just missed out on the playoffs last year. I'm not a huge believer in them. Wu just went down mm-hmm. with an elbow injury, a forearm strain. So we'll see how long he's going to be out. Decent little team. Um, I just haven't seen it from them. And then you got the Angels. I mean, that's really the, that's in that order. Those are the four um, right. in, in the American League West. So I think the expectation is tempered. I think what you want to see as an Angel fan, at least that's what I, I'm looking at it as, is I want to see the sure. next step. I want to see the next step in the progression for, for Neto, Ohapi, and the rest of those guys. And whatever you get from Mike Trout, which I think Mike is, if he's healthy, he's going to put up his typical numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, again, the, the, the million dollar question, Anthony Rendon, um, you know, what's he going to do? Does Shanuel have some pop in his bat? How's the outfield shake out? Is it Dell? Is it Ward? Is it, how, you know, there's a lot of, there's so many questions. It's like, you know, you don't have to worry about whatever is being talked about outside the clubhouse. Yeah, it's a great point. And, uh, you know, Chuck, I'm going to jump into one of the questions that came in from the mailbag because it lines up so well. And this came from Craig in Dalton, Georgia. And he says, what would make the 2024, what would make 2024 be considered a successful season for the Angels? And I think that's a great question, right? That should we be focusing on how many wins are they going to get? Are they going to make the playoffs versus kind of a bit of what Victor unpacked there of do we actually have a a good foundation here to build upon that maybe the cement's not going to be dry yet at the end of the season, but it's going to be solid enough to go, you know what, we can build a franchise on on these guys and the future looks bright. And that's and that's a good point. And you know, going into the season last year, uh Jeff, and I agree with that, we 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 didn't have Neto opening the season with the Angels, Shanuel or Ohapi, right? Or we did have Ohapi, I'm sorry. Um, but I mean, uh, this is a team that I, I really believe in, in, back to the earlier point, where there are no expectations, right? You take the Ron Washington factor, and you take the, the fact that the Angels are now, I mean, they're severe underdogs. And I think those two collide into some kind of like just extra energy, you know, that, uh, that the team can, that can get behind this team. Right. And um, again, as I alluded to earlier, they're running more, right. They're taking extra bases. They're doing all the the fundamentals. They're playing good defense. Now, granted, it's a small sample size in spring training. You got to do that in the, in the season as well. Um, They're, they're getting first pitch strikes. Right, they're not getting into the three and two counts all the time. Uh, granted, there's, it's going to happen, but if you reduce that, um, I mean, last year they were terrible um, with uh, just giving free passes and and uh, just getting in bad uh, pitchers counts where you just have to come over the plate with a, a meatball, right? And so they're just getting pummeled, and so um, and then you take Otani out of that, right? And they're like, guys, this is just us. This is this is the guys that were here, and these are the guys that were drafted or homegrown guys. And let's do it. And you add in an Aaron Hicks, and and I think Sano is going to make the team. And I like him at DH. I really do. I mean, you're going to see, you know, Trout and Rendon get at DH, and Adele and Moniak get some time too. But I really like his pop, and I like his story. To be honest with you, uh, shed fifty something pounds and looks good and he's got he's got that passion again you know it's like let's go and so i really hope he makes the team i think he will um but but to answer your question i i think it is 
is the young players, right? If Shaniwell, Ohapi, and Neto can stay healthy and, and have a, a really good season, and if, my God, even Trout can stay on the field, and hell, even Rendon, right? And you finish the season. I don't even want to put out a number or a place in the standings, mm-hmm. but if you, to your earlier point, have a springboard going into 2025, like, hey, these guys were healthy. The younger guys performed. And these are guys that we can now build upon. And, and even in the rotation with Silseth and Detmers and Canning and, and, and Sandoval, then holy smokes, dude, you're going into 2025 with a ton of momentum. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that that's my take on that, Jeff. Sure. Victor, let me throw that to you. What, what are your thoughts on what success looks for looks like for this team and what do you think success would look like specifically for ron washington at at the end of the year what what do you think his his outlook is on going into this is is he the type of guy that's you know if it if it's not a playoff run it it it, you know it, it wasn't good or is he a realist that is if i can start building a strong nucleus that that's something he would walk away with is a positive. Well, I think overall he wants to win. I mean, there's no doubt. I think anything short of not making the playoffs, he would consider that as, you know, a, a, a down year. That being said, I think you have to realize hey, he's a realist too, right? They didn't go out and spend any money on any big time free agents, any help, if you will. Right. And mm-hmm. even though uh, it sounded as if he wanted some, sounded as if Perry wanted some help, sounded as if Mike Trout and every every member of the Angels fan base wanted some help. Uh, to help this ball club in in 24. So I think, look, I, I, I think you're seeing some of the Ron Washington effect in spring training as to how they play the game and all the accolades that have come out of there, uh, you know, the way the, uh, they prepare for a game, they approach a game, approaching at-bats, approaching uh, situations, uh, you know, and that's all fine and good, right? Because you can you can slow the game down in spring training because they're meaningless games. They're exhibitions for a reason. Right. And so you, you have zero stress and, you know, early on when you're talking about pitchers, it says, Hey, it could be today. I want to throw 75, well, Barry Enright or whatever the program is 75% fastballs today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for most, most big league pitchers can throw 75% fastballs and they would prefer to do that because, you know, it's just an easier pitch to control. Right. And, uh, in spring training, hitters aren't quite as ready. Uh, pitchers are getting their work. So that, that's why I take the results kind of with a grain of salt. It's, it's kind of a, a mixed bag because it's supposed to be a mixed bag. I mean, sure. very few guys, very few guys will go out and have a monster, monster spring training that nobody's ever heard of or was a minor leaguer that was forcing his way on the roster. You know, I guess... So no, maybe it's not like he had a monster spring training, but I mean, you like the story, you like the idea of the possibility you have a need as well. So you, you yeah. like that story, but I was actually, for whatever reason, I think it's because yesterday I was watching a Cubs game in, uh, on TV and, you know, I kind of grew up like a lot of people did, uh, grew up watching Braves and Cubs on TV, Cubs, obviously day games. Sure. Uh, they were always on, mm-hmm. um, and I and I remember there was two guys you don't which you don't hear about anymore. Two guys that had monster springs and made a name for themselves, and it never really panned out. Gary Scott was a third baseman. Both guys are third basemen. Gary Scott, I remember he just went off, and then he got to the big leagues and had a, and had a pretty decent career, but it wasn't what happened in spring training. And the other guy was Kevin Ory, another third baseman for the Cubs. Similar type of situation. Uh, I guess you can kind of say the same thing for Brandon Wood, although it was more of the minor league numbers that never really translated to the big leagues. Sure, um, right. But as it relates to the to to spring training, y- y- you kind of have to, and I, I probably said this a year ago, you got to temper the expectations, right? Because no matter how good someone looked um, for a number of games, whether it starts as a pitcher or at bats or whatever the case may be, it's it's just a different animal when the bell rings on opening day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it just is. The games are just a little bit different. The speed's a little bit different. Um, and, 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 you know, you're, you're seeing, sometimes you're seeing guys you haven't seen at all. You got 15 teams in Arizona, 15 teams in Florida. The angels are going to open up against a team that they haven't seen. 
two teams they haven't seen, right? In the Orioles mm-hmm. and the Marlins, except for scouting yeah. reports. Mm-hmm. So, and conversely, they, they've got to do the exact same thing, right? right. The other teams right. do. Um, so I, I, I just, I like what I've seen so far. I like what I've heard coming out of camp of how we're going to play the game how we're going to be aggressive, how we're going to push the envelope. I think those are all things that needed to be done and needed to be accomplished. I think they're accomplishing that. Now I just want to see it carry over and, you know, just see what happens, especially on the, uh, on the starting front, to be perfectly honest with you, because if you start getting guys that are uh, starters, even though they're, they're, they're five inning guys, you know, you start getting knocked out in third, fourth innings of your five inning start and you start chewing at that bullpen early in the year, it's going to be a long year, man. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a good segue into into pitching and and <clears throat> I think going deeper in games is something that that Wash kind of talked about as he as he initially joined the team in some of his early press conferences and um Detmer's Chuck pitched really well last night I thought but mm-hmm. looking at that first inning and you know he's up around 25 maybe plus pitches in the first inning before he kind of calmed it down and had a really strong game um one of the questions that came in from uh paul in templeton california he said given the five-man rotation who are our sixth seventh and eighth guys right so basically from a from a starting pitching standpoint who do we think is on deck and do we have the the arms that we need uh to start the season i know that's something you've been looking at a lot chuck what are your your thoughts on our starting rotation well, yeah, I, I think that you're going to see um, Jose Soriano start uh, in Salt Lake. Uh, maybe they even start him at Rocket City because Salt Lake is not really a great spot uh, for pitchers. You got a spacious field like Coors. Um, obviously, the ball just jumps out of the ball- ballpark there. Um, so they may start him at Rocket City. We'll see. I think he's next in line. I mean, his last start, he got up to six innings six shutout innings and um i think he struck out eight guys and so you got him victor medeiros is another guy that's looked really good in spring training um i mean 3.12 era 12 strikeouts and eight and two-thirds innings he looked really good he's been uh the talk of camp um you got uh, uh davis daniel uh, is another guy you could move uh Suarez back into the rotation, but I think they want to keep him. Uh, they have to keep him on the roster or they'll lose him. He's out of options. I think he's going to be their long man. I think he's going to be their uh, Berea of last year and years before. Uh, just uh, give him some length. You hope he's um, not Berea of last year. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> How about the year before? <laughs> so, you know, uh, I, I would say those are the, the next three guys in line. But let's hope we don't have to use it, any of them for the uh, foreseeable future. Right. <laughs> Before know? we came on the air, I, I saw a note. Sorry to cut you off there, uh, Chuck. But, no. uh, Sam Blum said that Jose Soriano has made the Angels as a reliever. Oh, he, okay. I, so okay. He'll, he'll, I, he'll continue to get stretched out. He'll be one of those options from a, from a long-term perspective. Well, well that's, that's interesting, uh, Victor, because with that said, I wonder if they're, if they're going to keep uh, Suarez. So we'll see. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. I I missed that. Okay. And then Andrew Want uh Lance is another guy that they wanna they're trying to turn into a starter. So he's on the, the depth chart as well, uh yeah. to be a replacement. Caden uh Dana is a guy that they're they're gonna start in Rocket City and double A. His looked really good. I mean the guy resembles Noah Syndergaard. I mean, look at it. <laughs> and you know, he throws high high nineties, uh got uh, a good slider. We'll see. Uh, I think those are the guys really that are next in line. Victor, I know last year in in our podcast, we talked a lot about, you know, Canning and um, and Sandoval and, you know, the rest of the guys and, and how good we should expect them to be, right? Are they, are they anything collectively more than a major league four or five? Uh, when we're expecting them to be a two or a three, and this year, in some cases, maybe even a one. Uh, obviously, that's as with <clears throat> most years, pitching is typically, you know, the big question mark for a team. 
do you do you see anything this year that would indicate that there we should expect more from them than we've seen in the past? Well, expecting more and actually getting more are two different things, right? Because mm-hmm. the expectation should be or has been for Griffin Canning, he should be a three, four kind of guy. Um, mm-hmm. It hasn't quite materialized yet. Reed Detmers is supposed to be kind of a three guy, right? But that hasn't necessarily materialized itself yet. And so I think there there are questions as it relates to the staff. There's no doubt. I still think you have a staff of fours and fives. There's just, it yeah. just is what it is. And I think, look, I mean, Patrick Sandoval, no offense to Patrick Sandoval, he's your opening day starter, you know? Right. And, and so take that, you know, for, for what it's worth. And, and mm-hmm. I, I haven't seen Patrick Sandoval in the last couple of years do anything to earn an opening day start. No. I mean, have I missed something? I mean, no. I like I, the promise that he brings to the table. I like right. the potential and he's shown glimpses of it. Um, and maybe this is a way to kind of fire him up a little bit and, you know, maybe take maybe. that mantle and, and, you know, use that as, as a motivation. And if it works out fantastic. Um, but at the end of the day, this is what, that's, that's why the focus was the bullpen in the off season. That's why you sign so many guys in the off season, especially late inning guys so that you can shorten games up. I mean, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Um, right. and, and so that, that right there to me was the, the tell that it didn't seem like they were, unless somebody fell on their lap at a, a one year or an opt out year, or whatever, one of these big time free agents that, that they weren't going to sign anybody for, for big money. I mean, you know, was it going to be a Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, you know, Mike Clevenger's still out there. I mean, I know it's like, my, and Lorenzen was still out there as of last week. I know. And it's I, like, and, and they're, they're, he signed for nothing, you know, and it's mm-hmm. like, I, I you know, I, I really don't know. I, I'm tired of trying to figure it all out. I really am because it's, it's nauseating. Uh, well, but, well, let's stay, let's stay on that, on that point, uh, Victor, because this is something that fans have been kind of pissed off about. Like, you know, you had, Otani money in the pocket, so you would think that they're, you know, Artie's like, oh God, I thought he'd just get up to four hundred million and not over that. Is he that naive to think that that Otani wasn't going to get more than four hundred million? I mean, that just came out in a recent uh, article. And then, where I mean, where do you get that number? Just think about that for a second. Well, I know was that, was that a number that he thought. I think or, he crafted that number. So he crafted the number. Never ran it by anybody in, in baseball ops. Never ran it by John yeah. Carpino. Never, I mean, it's like you, you can't. I mean, like that's just that is. If, I, I have it no sounds idea. like sour grapes to me. Yeah, but but like, what I don't understand is like if 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 that was his number, why would you why would you even put that out there? Number one, I mean, it makes zero right. sense to even say you thought X, right? Um, whether, whether you did or didn't, it's just dumb to even mention it right because yeah. all you're going to do is people get people to pile on you um and i'm not I'm not trying to pile on here but i'm, I'm just saying at, at some point then hey these discussions had to have happened at some point last year last spring maybe the number started at four i don't know right but it seemed like even back then people were talking about half a billion dollars for shohei otani and i know that's just people throwing stuff on the wall but you know, usually where there's smoke, there's fire. And it turned out mm-hmm. to be kind of, the, you know, it played out that way. And and the case is, if, if that's what you thought, at, at what point did you get the indication that it's going to go way north of that and we need to get out of this? Did it happen when he hit free agency? I hope not, because then that's really short-sighted. And it right. goes back to how awful a decision it was to not trade him at the trade deadline, he was not coming back. Players have said that they knew or they felt that he wasn't coming back. I mean, if the clubhouse fed, felt that way, how did that not trickle into management? I, I just don't, I, I don't get it. That's, that's, a, that's a really, really uh, poor, poor statement to say especially when you thought it would be at at four when nobody thought it was going to be at four. And by the time we got to the trade deadline, nobody was even sniffing five. 
they were talking about going much higher than five. Mm -hmm. So at that point, why didn't you just say, hey, let's just let's just cut bait. Let's build for 24, see what we can get, build back our farm system, which absolutely has sucked for the last couple of years, and 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 take our chances. And if we get a chance to add in free agency, we'll add some, you know, some guys with free agency. But you do it with a stocked farm system. Or you say, hey, show, hey, we're gonna trade you. We're going to try to sign you in the offseason. Okay, get your players. Right. Offer them $600 million. Who cares? I mean, you're not going to go there. It clearly, Artie was, in his mind, was not going to go above four. Didn't even, I don't even know that he was going to go to four, to be perfectly honest with you. Mm -hmm. He just let, thought it was going to be four. Let me, let me ask you this. You, you know Artie uh, better than uh, both of us here, Victor. You Although know, we're pretty tight, me and Artie, so just... <laughs> well, you know, did interview him. Don't, yeah, that's yeah, right. Don't, don't over-assume that, you know... That Artie You're and right. I aren't like, you know. You're right. <laughs> well, You're right. So, but, but Victor, I mean, are, are you kidding me? I mean, you, he cannot see that, that, so you got Perry Manassian saying that, you know, hey, yeah, we got budget, you know, we, you know, uh, you know, we stayed underneath the luxury tax. Uh, we're going to do some things. And so the fans, you know, got excited. Oh, this is going to be a great, I mean, we got some. We got Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, J.D. Martinez. We got Bellinger, all these guys. So, And a lot of those guys wouldn't have been great fits. But, I mean, they really didn't go after anybody. They spent $30 million on on relievers. And I know it's a need, and I'm glad they did that. But there's I, – I don't understand how – getting back to Shohei, did Artie really just keep Shohei – to put butts in the seats to get tickets to get a profit, but For doesn't give a shit about the future of this team. Because if he gave a shit, he would have traded him and got some top prospects back. I, I, I'm gonna I don't, I'm gonna turn into that freaking Frank the Tank guy here in a second. <laughs> Fuck. I I have no I can't speak to you know, already thought process because I haven't had a conversation about it uh, with him. So I, you know, I, I have no idea. Um, it, the way it has played out, it seems as if that was the case. Maximize the attendance, maximize concessions, maximize everything for the last uh, month plus of the season or whatever the case was. And we'll roll the dice come the off season, you know, I got into this with uh, an MLB writer uh, last year, Barry Bloom, who I've known f since 2000 <clears throat> and, last year. And he talked about how some sponsorship contracts would void. It was, he was talking about some stupid number would void if Shohei was traded, which I think we've talked about that yeah. at, at some point last year. It's like, yeah, I mean, who's the moron that came up with the idea of giving a sponsor the right to void a contract if you are not allowed to do business as you see fit. That makes mm -hmm. zero sense to me. Um, but so, which goes to the point of, yeah, it was a bottom line decision, um, mm -hmm. clearly. Uh, now, whether he cared uh, about 24 and beyond, I, I really don't know. It, I, it's hard to say that he didn't care, but, but you know, the actions kind of play out the way they did. I, I think the fan base kind of feels like he doesn't care, right? Um, that being said, it's a shame that the Angels didn't go out and try to bolster their team. They did so in the bullpen, and I thought so. I thought that, I thought they needed to do that. I thought they needed to get another bat, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, I, I know I liked Whit Merrifield. Uh, I like JD Dave, uh, JD Martinez. Uh, just didn't know what JD was going to cost. Um, Twelve million dollars. I know. Well, at the time when we were talking about this, <laughs> yeah. you know, as as, a, as the hot stove was going on, we didn't know what the number was going to be. All of these guys that you know thought that they were going to get you know one hundred and fifty to two hundred million dollars ended up getting mm -hmm. shorter deals. All of them, all right. of them did. Um, and so, I don't, I don't know, man. It's just one of those things that I, I, because I, I think the one thing that you the message you send to the organization when you sign and bring in a guy like Ron Washington is like, all right, 
they could have just gotten a placeholder, right? They could have gotten a newbie manager. They could have saved money. Well, it seems like they saved money on the coaching staff. We've been over that subject before. Right. Um, oh my God. But uh, you, you could have gone, you could have gone that way and just said, or, or brought somebody up from the minor, you know, one of those. But when you go out and get a Ron Washington, you're like, okay, Hey, so the, this guy, and I know Wash, he, he wants to freaking win. I mean, he, right. there's an expectation on his part. Yeah. Like I'm here. I'm putting my name to it. You know, you got to meet me halfway. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't imagine that he's thrilled with how things have played out, but Wash isn't one of those guys that lets it linger. He's not going right. to sit there and go, if we're in mid May and they're 15 games out and they're in the middle of eight games, uh, losing streak. Well, you know, had we just gone out in the off season and done, he's not that guy at all. He'll right. shoulder the blame himself. And I think that's why when you go out and get someone like Ron Washington, you've got to give him the pieces. You got to, mm-hmm. whatever the pieces are, if that means Clint Hurdle as his bench coach, if it means going if he out wanted and, the pieces, it, 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 right. It, right. You got it within reason, right? Mm-hmm. Within right. reason. You can't just sit there yeah. and get one. He wasn't I, asking for the moon. He didn't, no. he wasn't bitching and moaning to the media when they didn't no. sign, resign Otani. Re- I mean, what, 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 Clint what, Hurdle would have been the 17th highest paid yeah. Bench coach in Major League Baseball. Yeah. So he wasn't even in the top ten. No, I know, I know. And and, and look, you know, uh, say what you want about the whole situation. Uh, you could easily just put it to bed by saying, "Hey, Wash, we want you, but X." Now that being said, the way they they did the bullpen thing, uh, which we've touched on a number of times before, if you've listened to our podcast. The, the beauty of that is, look, if you catch lightning in a bottle and you start making a push, you can add uh, you can add to the to the roster and still be well within uh, the threshold, the uh, collective bargaining, not collective bargaining, the, uh, the, the salary threshold uh, before the luxury tax kicks in. And conversely, if you start not playing well and you see that things are, you know, and assuming the guys that you brought on board, especially from the bullpen perspective, which is huge going into the off season towards the end of the year and into the off season, you've got pieces to sell off, right? That you can get good number of players back to help bolster your minor leagues. Right. That being said, it's like, I I would have, I would have liked to have seen a guy like JD guy, like wit guys that have been around that just have that little extra eh about them into that clubhouse with, with the, with the young players, I just think it would have been huge. And it, and it has to be a position player. It's hard for a pitcher to step up into the role of leader with right. position players. And conversely, right. you know, other than a guy like Mike Trout or now we you know, the guys of stature <clears> can do it fair. with a, a frontline pitcher or something to that. So that that's where I wish there was And Mike, Mike's going to do his part. I'm sure Rendon does his part. You know, like I said, I think I think guys in the clubhouse like him, and it's different when the doors are closed and it's just them. Um, but I would have liked to have seen, you know, a, a JD or a Wit come in and be that that wash type guy that's going to help these young guys get to that next level. And I think that's that's what I think the Angels missed on this offseason. I think that that was their biggest miss for me. Yeah. For for me, Jeff, um, it's it's that Patrick Sandoval is our opening day starter. Period. Uh boy, that's a tough one. It's it's a tough one to swallow. I mean, he was a subject of our conversation in many of our podcasts last year. Now maybe yeah. that changes now maybe that changes under Barry and Wright and Ron Washington. Like mm-hmm. maybe Ron Washington is not gonna put up with that bullshit on the mound, the mm-hmm. tantrums and you know, and all that. And like, hey, throw freaking strikes. Because when he throws strikes, he's pre- he's a damn good pitcher. It's execution. I mean, it's execution. It no matter mm-hmm. what, it doesn't matter. You could have Mel Stottlemyer. You could have Charlie Lau as a hitting coach. Walt Riniak as a hitting coach. It you can the greatest of all time teachers, right? It doesn't matter who you have as the coach. If the player cannot execute on a consistent basis. It's on the player. It's always on the player. Sure. Right. I, I don't, at, at, at any, any level, especially at the major league level. But how so, much of the execution starts between the ears? Well, that, and that's, and, but, and does and, Ron but, but who, have the ability to, to get that turning, to give 
Sandy a better chance of yes. executing once he gets yes. on the bump. Yes, he's done it before. I mean, I mean, the proof is in the pudding with what yeah. Washington did in Texas. There's, there's no doubt about it. Um, mm -hmm. And he's not going to put up with BS. Uh, you know, and that's the thing with Wash. He, he's a short rope guy. He's like, man, this is how we're going to play it. If you don't want to, mm -hmm. if you don't want to be a part of this, you don't want, you're not buying in. See ya. Get I mean, that, 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 right. that's just how, that's just how he is. And so, yeah, I think part of it is mental. There's no doubt because clearly if you're not hurt uh, and you've got the physical attributes to, to pitch at the major league level, um, you, you have to be able to execute. And if the part of the execution that's, that if, if your execution is being impeded by the fact that uh, between up here, the mm -hmm. ears is having issues, somebody who needs to get on that, uh, whether yeah. it's through sports psychology, whether it's through whatever means, you got to be able to do that because you can, you can take a body, you can take a motion, you can take pitch shaping, you can take all the stuff you do in a pitching lab and a hitting lab, all that stuff um, that's been done for hundreds of years. Now they just call them labs, right? Mm -hmm. You could take all that information and and tweak and 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 do this and that, but if it doesn't, if you're not buying into it here, and you lack the confidence to execute what you see can make you a better pitcher, you're just never going to get there. You're never so, you're going to you see these peaks and valleys of like mm -hmm. oh it clicked oh it, it stopped clicking oh it clicked mm -hmm. again it stopped clicking. That's the 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 roller coaster that you have to stop with. A lot of these guys. Right. So, Chuck, maybe that's the answer of why Patrick Sandoval is it's not, we talked about it 10 or 15 minutes ago. There's not a number one MLB right. starter on this team. There's probably not even a number two MLB starter on this team. So which of your number four or five guys are you going to pick to be the opening day starter? And maybe it's Wash looking and going, you know what? I think I can get the most bang for the buck between the ears by giving Sandy the ball on opening day. I think that that will show him enough. I believe in you. I'm with you. We're going to drive this forward to maybe set him up for a successful season. I, I can see that. And uh, Chuck, I know yeah. you're talking to Chuck. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Going off of last year, you can see where, okay, I can see Griffin Canning. I could see mm -hmm. him being the opening day guy because you, you sure. saw some promise and you saw yeah. him fight back. And OK, but I, to your point, I can absolutely say, all right, I know Griff Griff's on his path. We'll see. Let, let him go. But from a psychological standpoint of jump starting something, you know, let, let's see if we can. And, and there's no doubt it's conversations, it's reactions, it's uh, it's interactions with him. Uh, and, and there's no doubt that it, that played a role in it. Yeah. And, and you know what, Jeff? And I'll answer that too. I I think um, it was a challenge to Patrick Sandoval. The mm. guy had the worst ERA of any of the five starters in camp by mm -hmm. far. Gave up more hits than in his pitch. Walked six guys in eleven innings. You know he wasn't. You know looking like the guy that's going to be the opening day starter. But Ron Washington still gave him the ball on right. opening day. I think it's the challenge that he needs, hopefully, and he, he takes it, runs with it. I mean, let's hope. yeah, I mean, and let's hope it works. I mean, I know that there's probably nobody other than Rendon on this team that I have bagged on more than Patrick Sandoval. And there's <laughs> also nobody on this team that I want to be more successful than Patrick Sandoval. Local kid. Went to Mission Viejo High School. Right. Won, won a state championship. My my friend's kid was on that team with him. Uh, mm. Jake Figueroa, what's up, buddy? Jake came to our some of our spring training fan fest ten I years remember. ago yeah. when he was a little kid. I mean, yeah. the, I want Patrick to do well, right, for the team, but for him too. There's yeah. there's that local connection. So, yeah. I if if that's why. Wash is doing it. I'm all about it. And I, yeah. and I hope it, it pans out. All right. Let's shift gears. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Big, big news in Major League Baseball. 
big news in Dodgers baseball with some deep roots into Angels baseball and really in sports with what has come out over the last week with Shohei Otani and his translator, Ipe. Help me with the last name if anybody can Mizahara. pronounce it. Thank Mizahara. you. Um, and a an illegal sports betting scandal, the paying off of debts that turned into the stealing of money. There's been a lot of stories that have changed, especially in the last, in the first 24 hours that the story came out. Show had a press conference yesterday before the game with the Angels, which he took no questions. Um, it seemed very much lawyer know, speak. It, it was lawyer speak. It seemed a lot like a hostage video. Um, <laughs> I, how, so, Victor, I'll start with you. How, bi how big a deal is this? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, how, well, how big a deal nice, is that? nice tap dancing too you're right. like shirley temple in one of those 1930s movies seriously you know. i mean that was how painful how painful was that By for the you way, to hollywood to was built on the back of shirley temple and <laughs> some very inappropriate movies where she's dancing around on the good ship lollipop with a bunch of men around her, where are her parents on this sh good ship lollipop that yep. this little girl is walking around on? Very but creepy. But we digress. <laughs> but we digress. <laughs> Very creepy, but we'll put that aside <laughs> for another episode. Victor, how big a deal is this? I'm going to start for Major League Baseball, mm -hmm. for the Dodgers, and then potentially for for the Angels in what could have been happening during his time here and the potential complicity of the team God, uh, um, as stuff comes forward. Shit. We only got 13 minutes, dude. Um, <laughs> Just some light, light banter to yeah, wrap so, up the podcast. Look, I, I've been, I've been pretty steadfast. I mean, if you read anything that I've posted, I, I, I believe in, you know, the presumption of innocence, right? I think you, until you're proven guilty, you're innocent. Um, what I think everyone is has jumped on is the fact that there was a story coming out by ESPN that they were investigating Otani, right? Because of the name that was attached to the wire transfers. They weren't investigating ePay. Um, so that's how it all started. Right. And then and then you've got the conflicting things that happen in Seoul. And I think yeah. that's where every that's where the flips the the switch got flipped for everybody. Like, man, I th I even said I think I might have more questions now than ever before. I'm, I'm I'm a little confused as to how all this has played out. I'm still confused. I have no idea. Look, I think like I would imagine both of you. I hope Shohei wasn't involved in anything. Uh, I think Absolutely. he is an amazing talent. I think he is he showed me that he was a really good human being, kind, caring, uh, soft natured, um, funny as heck. Uh, you hear all those stories, you know, Josh Hamilton was kind of that way too. And we know how that worked right. out with Josh <laughs> and, right. and his inner demons. We just never know. And so I, I, I'm not passing judgment. I'm just saying that I want this to go away that Shohei did not bet on baseball, wasn't involved in this, and that it was, you know, uh, this nefarious bad actor in Ipe that did all of this, and we can kind of just go on with our with with our way. I think that's, I think deep down most baseball fans would hope that. I just think that there's more and more questions that need to come out, and they're going to come out. Look, I mean, it's a federal investigation, right, mm -hmm. and. As we've seen federal investigations play out, things will come out, whether it's text messages, whether it's PayPal receipts, whether it's wire transfers, all that stuff. All of that stuff is going to come out of the wash. And I, I think, you know, after listening to Shohei yesterday 
read his statement. I, I absolutely, there was a lot more to it. It was a lot longer than I anticipated it was going to be. The genesis of the of of what his statement was was pretty much kind of what I thought it was going to be, kind of in line with what once they corrected the story or however they spun it, you know, in Seoul to where Ipe lied to us. Uh, Ipe never told Shohei any of this stuff, and it was massive theft. I thought all of that was all pretty much contained in the same statement. So it's right. they're kind of using the exact same thing that they that they were putting out before yesterday's press conference to now putting Shohei's face out there with the statement. I hope he's 100% correct in all of this. Mm -hmm. Because if there's one thing that, that you know, there's always that, that other side, right? Because you haven't heard from the other side. Right. Um, has Ipe been arrested? Has he been questioned? Who has he been questioned by? Has Shohei's camp uh, filed uh, a legitimate complaint in L.A. or in Orange County, wherever wherever the fraud happened or the massive theft happened? Have they filed right. the the proper paperwork against Ipe? Has Ipe gotten representation? Mm -hmm. Have we heard from Ipe's representation? You know, because look, Ipe could very well just come out and he and he did. I lied. I did it all or whatever. He could come right back out and say with his lawyer said, "I did this. I'm going to." you know, pay the price for what I did. And I'm, that's it. End of story. Or he could come out and say, well, that's not quite how it happened. If that comes out, then I think it's, I think it's really a lot bigger than, because now, now Shohei's brand is taking a hit, right? Mm -hmm. Because you put him out there with that statement. So I just think there's just so many things that still need to be unpacked. I don't, I don't get the people that are talking conspiracy and, you know, he did this and I do have my questions. I mean, mm -hmm. what, why would a bookie allow a four plus, And I've heard upwards a lot higher than $5 million yes. credit to yes. an interpreter making, you know, I guess at 1.80,000 to up to $500,000 a year. That's just mm -hmm. an insane amount of money credit on illegal bookmaking, unless you know you're good for it. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I, I, again, at the end of the day, there's nine transfers, nine wires totaling four and a half million dollars. And look, I've, I've transferred some money, never that amount of money. Mm -hmm. And there are multiple steps that need to go through that. I almost feel as if when I was listening to Shohei, I, I, yesterday I was almost thinking, you know what? He should fire everybody on his team, everybody on his team. Because it just seems like, like he was kept in the dark by all of, including his team. Because it was his right. team that took Ipe to ESPN for Pete's sake. How mm -hmm. do you to not speak, sit there and say to speak for ninety minutes on the record? That's what I don't who understand. Do, for who does a, a ninety-minute interview on the record about an investigation that may have his name? Like, why right. wouldn't you run that by him? That's why I've said, like, for Shohei, it's like, uh. Hey man, I didn't do this. Uh, I was, I was, Ipe stole this money from me, had nothing to do with bookmaking. I've never gambled, blah, 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 blah. And by the way, everyone on my left here, you guys are all fired and start over with a brand new team because I, I think they've just put him in a bad situation. They made a bad situation or a tough situation worse by the fumbling in Seoul. And now they're just trying to, to clean up the pieces. So we'll see how, how it, it all unfolds. Um, it's, it's, you know, Major League Baseball, obviously, look, you talk about growing the game globally. He is an international superstar. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Right. Um, he is the face of baseball. And that's why it's as big a story as it is. And that's why people are intrigued by it. And really, you just have to wait to see what comes out from the Epe side. I, yeah. I, think, I think once you hear from that side, I think you'll have a better understanding of where this is going to go. But until then, we've got one side of things and a, and a, and a, a statement that was retracted by the other side. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I'm just curious how that will eventually play. I don't think it impacts the Dodgers. Clearly Shohei's not, the dude's a different animal. He's a beast mentally, physically. 
Um, clearly, he's just gone out and just done his job and, could, and will continue to do that. So I don't think it'll impact the Dodgers at all. I think that's a, I think that's one of the best teams in the National League. Their offense is ridiculous. Um, and I think they're, they're going to – they're definitely going to cash in on the windfall of having Shohei uh, in tow, uh, you know, barring any, any surprises that comes out of this investigation. Yeah. Chuck, you know, I, I've taken some, some hits both on my own Twitter account and on the Angels Win Twitter account when I'm tweeting from <laughs> there about how, you know, I'm a hater and we're haters for, you know, things that we, we've said about this. I've said many times on this podcast in, since Otani signed with the Dodgers, I have no ill will for the guy. I mm -hmm. hope he has. I hope he does great. I hope that he goes four for five every night with two home runs and the Dodgers lose seven to six every night for 162 <laughs> games. I, that, that's my feeling on it, right? I'm with you, Jeff. <laughs> I want what he said yesterday in his legally prepared statement and hostage video. I want all of that to be true. I also wanted it to be true when Lance Armstrong made his first comments. I wanted it to be true when Rafael Palmero sat in front of Congress and made his comments. I wanted Mark McGuire to, to not be lying to us initially. And none of those panned out. How about Bill Clinton? <laughs> I'm not going to go into that. This I a, did not. <laughs> this is a... Uh, this is not a political podcast as much Correct. as Correct. But we do have a political section of the Angels Win website. Come on over and argue with everybody. Yes. Shameless plug. Uh, Shameless right. plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, uh, Jeff, you're right, you're, by the way. You're, you're absolutely uh, – every, there are people that want to see anybody that has success – fail that, that mm -hmm. they are driven by the failures of those at the top and you're going to see that whether it's in sports politics it doesn't it doesn't matter you're you're going to see that everywhere i i think deep down most true baseball fans want this to be something that show it wasn't a part of right but I'm not going to apologize because I have questions based on no. what his own people have right. said and done. Yes. And, and that's what I don't understand. It's like, man, you got to be pretty thin skinned for God forbid I question something mm -hmm. that pretty much the entire world is questioning other than someone that's wearing a Dodger hat in their profile. Right. That I just have questions. That's that's mm -hmm. it. That's it. That's what I, I don't understand. It's like, why, why are you getting your panties in a bunch over someone? Dodger say, fan. Man, I, I don't, right. I don't get it. I don't. Okay. Hey, but it doesn't mean that I want him to fail. I, it's not that I want him, man. I hope they find the smoking gun and show he's banned from baseball. I think it's bad for baseball. I yeah. think the fact that we're talking about this for a week leading into the true opening day on Thursday, mm -hmm. when everybody starts playing is pathetic. I think it's sad. Whereas the Dodgers should be focused on show and the Dodgers and, and their opening day and nothing else but that, they've got to deal with the aftermath of it as well. And I think yeah. that's that that's where I think most true baseball fans are coming from. They're coming from a good place. Forget the jag offs that are always throwing stuff on the wall and like want him to fail because ah, oh, this is a BS thing. And I've I've worked with bookies before, you know, everybody and their and their theories about everything. Um, I saw a bunch of stuff today from, I've worked in banking. I will say this, when you do transfer anything over $10,000 mm -hmm. and you start getting, you're going to steal my line, Victor. There, there's a, there's red flag, but those are the questions that I want answered. That, that, that's it. It's not that I want it to be show. Hey, I just mm -hmm. like to know now what, how, what actually played out. Sorry, Chuck. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's it. I mean, Shohei Otani is the most either he's the most naive person on the planet and a victim of theft, or I mean, he's he's guilty of this in some facet. I mean, let's face it, 
how could you not know that you're missing upwards to 4.5 and and even like Victor said even I more see, I can see him not realizing that the money is gone because if you're not checking it on a daily or whatever the I get that but again how his people right aren't seeing these $500,000 wires going out nine of them I, I to me I lay that blame at their feet that's why I say I would I would get rid I why would I trust those people when you say his people, Victor, are you thinking? Are, are you talking about his agent? What, what lawyers? Whoever, whoever, whoever his lawyer yeah. was, whoever the yeah. crisis Accountants. manager was, whoever the accountant was, whoever's <laughs> supposed to be looking over. Because I guarantee it wasn't Epay being the accountant. Right. You know? right. I, he may way, have had it, access. You know, he may have had access to the accounts and whatever. That's fine. But to that point, like, though, where, if where's EPay where's was the, really only making the five thousand dollars to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for his first couple of years? How does this guy have access to show his accounts? Right. Well, that, I, I mean, look again. I, I've seen, I, look, I've seen a lot of things. There's I've weirder things out things. there. I get. There's it, a yeah. lot of weird things out there, mm -hmm. and you know what, guys, guys fall into the trust thing, and and they feel comfortable, and hey, whatever. I don't, I don't judge. But again, sure. where's the where's the firewall? Right. On the accountment accounting side to prevent these kind of things. Where's the red flag? That's all I'm saying is like on that side of things, not blaming Shohei for not knowing. I, I get it. I mean, that's a ton of money he makes on a yearly basis and spread out through number of different accounts. Uh, he probably has one, if not two accounts of which is, you know, the, the, the daily access, but you know, stuff to pay bills and, and everything else is in wherever uh, investment accounts. But I mean, there had to have been some sort of a red flag from the accounting side of Shohei's financial people, like, or at the very least, ask the question, hey, dude, like, this is the third $500,000 wire that you've sent out. Like, like, why are you, did that conversation ever happen between mm -hmm. Shohei's financial people and Shohei? That's, that's right. kind of one of those questions that I, I, I would like to have answered. Not that I deserve an answer. I'm just saying I'm more. <laughs> we all we deserve, deserve an answer. answer. No, we 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 don't deserve answers. I'm just I'm <laughs> now since the genie's out of the bottle. I'm right now. I'm now I'm curious, and I'd I'd like to know that. And I think that's all it is. Chuck, I've got a bigger question, but to any any final thoughts on that? No, um, no. Okay, so here here's my bigger question, right? Baseball. America's sport, America's pastime has struggled for the last decade plus of mm. trying to build a fan base. And yep. one of the things that we've seen in the last five to 10 years is that the participation at the youth level in football has been declining because as more and more information comes out about CTE and the dangers of it, and a lot of kids are going to play football, there's only this many that actually make it up into the professionals and can cash in. Dangerous sport. That the number of people playing baseball, especially on a lot of these travel teams, which is its own issue that we could, is another time. Baseball has an opportunity to kind of build a new fan base. And one of the ways that they've been doing that, especially with young adults, has been with the new online gambling, right? Mm. You've got FanDuel. You've got, you know, ESPN now mm -hmm. has their own gambling app right. through Penn, which this is when Dave Portnoy was able to buy back you know, bar stool right. from Penn for a dollar because Penn was selling their gambling portion to ESPN and ESPN came in on that. So now you have baseball and it's all the other sports too, but you know, we're a baseball podcast and this is, this story is impacting baseball where baseball and gambling is becoming tighter and tighter. And now you've got this big scandal. How does Major League Baseball navigate through this other than trying their best to bury the story, hope it goes away, and I don't know. And, 
That's a jump ball, gentlemen. I'll let either of you take that one. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it real quick because I, I can see the gears turning in Victor's head. So real quick, I this is my fear, Jeff, that that Major League Baseball is protecting Otani. Oh, yes. I mean, all right. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. I mean, he's the face of the game. I mean, we already mm-hmm. talked about that. He's a nice guy. Eh, there's a lot of nice guys that uh, do bad things. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I'm, and I'm not saying Otani is guilty here either. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm with Victor and you guys, I mean, innocent until proven guilty, right? Sure. Um, but that's where I think you're, this thing will never go to rest. Because there's always going to be that thought out there, like, how much money does Major League Baseball have? And can, I mean, can they even buy the feds off, right? I mean, let's, I mean, let's face it. There are. <laughs> Damn it, I'm I a... should have brought my tinfoil down here to create my own hat. <laughs> I didn't know you were you going there. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't trust <laughs> these guys. I don't trust the feds. My God. All right, I'm kicking it over to you, Victor, because don't get me started. God damn it. Yeah, I, I don't know, bro. I really, I don't know where to go from there. Um, like gambling and sports are in bed with one another. Gambling and media outlets are in bed together. I mean, uh, podcast, you know, I saw Foul Territory. <laughs> uh, oh, God. What you might call it? Uh, Ken Rosenthal's doing a hit on the Shohei thing and this. And the scroll, the, the the crawl at the bottom is brought to you by a, M- MGM bets, right. exactly. You know? with, so, with the lines on yeah, all of the, the games. Lines, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it it is it is what isn't there isn't there a uh, Toronto Raptor being investigated or something about a yes Jordan um, just happened a couple days ago, right? Yes. Uh, oh, what's his name? You tweeted him out, didn't you? I did, and I'm trying to because it's brother, the wine, <laughs> wine. It, it, it's uh, Porter is his last name because he's the brother of Michael Porter Jr. that plays on the Nuggets, mm. and I, I I forget his name, but yes, he's he's involved in a in a gambling scandal, and right. he's kind of a B C player. So the, yeah. I mean, he's one they could kick to the curb and be done. Right. He's yeah. not the face of right. exactly. basketball internationally. That's where it's yeah. different, right? I, I don't look. You know, I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories because you oh, know, it's, come it's, on, it's a it's a rabbit hole that's not worth my time. For, for, for honest right now. Uh, but that being said, look there, again. There's a federal investigation going on. At least one of them. Uh, if not multiple, um, and there's a state involved, obviously in California, and I just think that because of that, it, it's it's almost it's hard for it to go away. I just um, and I think the less information that's out there, the more damning that it could be for Shohei. This is just me spitballing, and the more information that does come out would lead me to believe that Ipe did steal and that, you know what I mean? Where they start building up that fire. See, we told you it was Ipe. Um, you know, he did it. He's going to admit to it, whatever. And so, again, until this whole thing starts un- unwinding, um, you know, we'll we'll see. I I, I hope show is telling the, the truth. I, mm-hmm. I, I'd like to believe him. I, I have no reason me to too. doubt him. Um, but good God, can you imagine a lawyer with Epe and Epe saying, hey, man, I was kind of forced to say that I didn't do it. And the defamation lawsuit that would get filed in a heartbeat Oof. would be. I'm here for and, it. And, and then I, that would just I mean, but I mean, again, until until he gets representation, really until. Well, he should have representation already uh, yeah. because there, there's been bombs just lobbed his way. Right. And two if that's the case and that's their intent, then there, there's going to be charges at some point somewhere along the line. And so you have to be prepared if you're, if you're the opposition. So I just, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. I can care less by the way, 
if Shohei's on the Dodgers. It means absolutely nothing to me. This whole thing between <laughs> the Dodgers Angels, it's such a contrived rivalry. It's like I really don't care. I oh, wasn't it's born different. Here. I know, but you didn't grow I, up in Southern California. I, you didn't grow up. You were I an did. angel fan in the That's 80s. That's not a rivalry. One. It's not a rivalry. It's not a It not is a rivalry. rivalry. Bullshit. Dodgers, <laughs> Giants, that was a rivalry. Oh, shit. Okay. I will take it to the grave. Yankees, Red Sox, <laughs> that's a rivalry. Dodgers, Angels, it's this mega BS of the five freeway. All right, and maybe it's not a rivalry. <laughs> it's hate. It's it's. It's I don't hate. get it. I, I didn't get it in my 13 years or whatever, 11 years, whatever. I mean, forget how many years it's been so long already uh, that I was with the <laughs> angels, even going back to 82 when my dad started working for the, the angels. Like, I don't, I don't get it, but whatever, you know, Jeff, and people can like, you speak- like, Oh, angels guy, angels broadcaster guy. He's pissed that show. has gone to the Dodgers. I'm like, I don't give three shits. I really don't. Oh, God. And I I've been retired for four years for Christ's sake. I have to pour more wine. Oh, I could speak to this. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I mean? I'm going to turn it into Frank the Tank here. If you, if I you guys, do. on that note, I'm out. <laughs> well, I'll save it for the next episode. <laughs> oh, no. On behalf of AngelsWin.com founder oh. Chuck Richter and Victor Rojas. Wait, I, just... I have. Okay. I, ha- I have one message. Uh, All right. Uh, opening day, I'm hosting a a watch party at my house. And I have found when I put out the flyer, no, I didn't know that there was another, other than a, this one guy I knew, I didn't know that there's so many angels fans here in Tennessee, Yeah, yeah. but I just, I created a flyer. I wanted mm-hmm. to see, see if I got any bites And my God, I'm going to have 10, 12 people here at my house <laughs> on opening day. I'm doing smoke pulled pork and, uh, and brisket, and I—I uh, I mean, it's my God, Keith uh, Keith Sharon. You remember him uh, at the Orange County Register? He moved here. He writes for the Tennessean. Yeah. Keith, Keith Sherrington. Sherrington. Yeah. No, it's Keith Sharon. Of the, he was the chief uh, editor of the Keith Orange will County be Register. There. Keith will be there. Keith will be there, <laughs> and his son. <laughs> I just wanted to jack with you. By the way, God real damn it. You, by you the stopped way. for such a second, I thought your camera froze. <laughs> You're like fuck. Real real quick. <laughs> our hey Sharon. our hearts our hearts go out to everybody in Baltimore today. Really horrible yeah. accident wow. yeah. there. As of right now, and I've been kind of checking Twitter, it doesn't appear that opening day is going to be um impacted by that but obviously the lives of people that were lost will be impacted forever and uh yep. our hearts are with that city and with those people so on behalf of chuck richter victor rojas i'm jeff stoddart have a great week go angels go angels thank you for listening to the angels win podcast with victor rojas Chuck Richter, and Jeff Stoddart. Go Halos and drive home safely. We're still recording.